She was the demure companion to Jayalalitha. She was the shadow, the person who always stayed in the wings, but whose presence was known to those in the know. She helped Jayalalitha become Purachitalaiva. She was instrumental in making Jayalalitha the Amma of Tamil Nadu, while she remained the Chinnamma. Now with Jayalalitha gone, Chinnamma wants the spotlight on herself. Chinnamma wants to be Amma. For our person of interest this week, the journey has been a long one for Shashikala Nataraja. In the early 1980s, Shashikala's husband Natarajan, a government servant then, encouraged his wife to open a video cassette rental and video recording shop in Chennai. And it was her husband who arranged a first meeting between her and Jalalita through the then district collector of Kadalur. V.S. Chandralekha. Back then, Jayalalitha was AIA DMK Secretary for Propaganda. It was in 1984 that Shashikala got a contract to videograph Jayalalitha's political meetings. The leader was impressed with Shashikala's video shoots and their friendship gradually developed. In 1987, MGR's death left Jayalalitha distraught. Rocked by personal anguish and political isolation, Shashikala proved a loyal friend for Jayalalitha. Jayalalitha needed very badly a person to take care of her house because she had no other help. She has often said uh, a male politician has his family, his wife, his children and all to run the house. I have nobody. I am a single woman. I am not married. So there is no one to help me and so I need somebody in the house. And so she was uh, kind of relieved of all the burden of, you know, the running the house, the mundane duties and all that. So that is how they became, you know, I suppose Sashikala also became dependent on her for her uh, survival or existence. It was at this juncture that Sashikala, the school dropout from Tanjavur, proved helpful. By 1989, she along with her husband had moved in with Jaya at Post Garden. And she brought in an army of cooks and maids from her hometown of Manargudi to help Jayalalitha, her sole sister. Now, she also became a business partner of Jayalalitha in some of her business ventures. But by 1991, when Jayalalitha became chief minister for the first time, Shashikala was in complete control of her affairs. After Jalalita became the chief minister, there were strong accusations that Shashikala and her relatives were functioning as extra constitutional authorities. However, Jalalita paid no heed to these. In 1995, Jalalita adopted Shashikala's nephew Sudhakaran as her foster son and organized his extravagant wedding, splurging crores and using state government organizations to facilitate the preparations required for 25,000 guests. Although this raised eyebrows everywhere, what was striking was the presence of Jalalitha and Shashikala dressed like twins in similar saris and expensive diamond jewellery. That moment marked to the world how close the duo had actually become. A year later, AIADMK lost the assembly elections. Jaya disowned Shashikala after the assembly poll rout, severing all ties. The main cause of defeat was rumours of Shashikala and her family getting rich by wrongful means. Multiple cases are still pending against several members of Shashikala's Manarguddi clan. In fact, her entire family from Manarguddi is dubbed as the Manarguddi Mafia. There were also rumours of Shashikala acquiring land in and around Chennai and Tanjavur and her assets included movable and immovable property. But then, 
Jalalitha wrote a 14-page letter blaming Karuna Nidhi for targeting her partner. Days later, when Jaya was sent to jail for color TV scam, Shashikala accompanied her. It was Shashikala who facilitated the famous 1999 tea party at Delhi's Ashoka Hotel, hosted by Subramaniam Swami, that brought Sonia Gandhi and Jayalalitha together. In 2001, Shashikala formally joined as the AIA DMK General Council member. In 2008, Jaya even exchanged garlands with Shashikala for her 60th birthday celebrations. But in 2011, rumours of a coup led Jayalalitha to expel Shashikala and 13 others, including Shashikala's husband Natarajan and their relatives from the party. Shashikala's estranged husband was arrested in February 2012 in connection with a land grabbing case. He was accused of having grabbed 20 acres of agricultural land in a village in Tanjapur. However, four months later, Shashikala wrote a letter to Jayalalitha and publicly distanced herself from her family. She wrote, Only after coming out of Pose Garden, I became aware of the machinations of my relatives who have misused my proximity and brought disrepute to Akka and the party. I have no role whatsoever in that. Hereafter, any relative, whosoever it might be, who had conspired against Akka will remain a persona non grata for me as well. And once again, Shashikala rejoined Jayalalitha. They have had a symbiotic relationship. Uh, it's been a, a relationship with this bit of a roller coaster, but she's probably the closest uh, person to Jayalalitha than, that uh, most people know of. She's an enigma by herself. No one really knows much about what the relationship is. But clearly, uh, with a leader of that stature, of, of Jayalalitha, uh, she was known to be somewhat of a lonely leader, remote. Uh, and Shashikala, in some senses, was not only uh, a confidant of hers, but more than just that. She was family. She was a sister. Jalalitha talked of her being almost like a mother uh, on it. So there was a special relationship. It got spoiled at some points, but towards the end, they were clearly, clearly bonded together still. In 2016, the spotlight was back on Shashikala after Jalalitha was hospitalized. She was one of the very few people who had access to Jayalalitha in hospital. When Jayalalitha died, Shashikala took the centre stage. She stepped out of the shadows to stand firm and resolute by the casket of her best friend of over 30 years. Dressed in a black sari, she was an image of grief. Standing next to Jayalalitha's mortal remains in Chennai's Rajaji Hall, exactly the same way Jayalalitha stood next to MGR's body decades ago. The little that I've seen of Shashikala ji is that she was always there as a shadow for Jai Lalita ji, serving her every need and looked after her home and her welfare and uh, never tried to project herself uh, beyond uh, Jai Lalita. And um, even in private moments, uh, when we all met, when the three of us met, uh, Jayaji would always be the centre stage and Shashikala ji would be the ancillary person who would facilitate Jayalalitha. The visiting dignitaries including the Prime Minister met and condoled her loss. It was Shashikala who performed the last rites of Jayalalitha, clearly signalling that Tamil politics was going to shake up in the coming days. And as you saw in the funeral, uh, she not only was there right through the entire time with the, where the body was lying in state, uh, but when the, the funeral rites were being performed, she was the one that was doing a lot of the rites. So I think that in itself is politically uh, significant, apart from being personally important. The show of strength by Shashikala's family at Jayalalitha's funeral came as a shock for many. Because remember, it is the same family that she had severed her relationships with when in 2011, Jayalalitha had shown her a door. Now it is being said with some authority that Shashikala and her family members are the major beneficiaries of the fortune that Jayalalitha left behind.
Shashikala's husband Natarajan, who Jayalalitha vocally disapproved of, was prominently present at the funeral. Jayalalitha had openly told her partyman not to have any truck with Natarajan, but there he was, within hours of her demise. Right from the time that Jayalalitha was hospitalized, speculation was rife in Chennai that Natarajan, who was persona non grata for anyone in the AIA DMK, so long as Jayalalitha was hale and hearty, was making his moves. It wasn't just him. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Chashikala's family members occupied every inch around Jayalalitha's body. Two years ago, I gave a, a complaint to the Tamil Nadu police saying that there is a sinister, diabolical plan to murder her and take over the party. And uh, the main accused, the conspirator, was Mr. Nadrajan, who is the husband of Sasikala Nadrajan, who is now standing, who everybody is saying that. And uh, this was based on all the inputs that I got from all the people around him while I was uh, engaged in building a, a statue for his uh, Tamil Thai Mutsam. And I accuse. Uh, the entire Manargudi Mafia for being behind her unnatural death. Who is this Manargudi Mafia? The Manargudi Mafia is Mr. Nadrajan, Sasikala and the whole gang. They are responsible. Sources indicate that Shashikala and her family have emerged as the major beneficiaries of Jailalita's fortune. Shashikala had reportedly been bequeathed the sprawling tea estates of Kodnad in which Jalalita had invested over 3 crore rupees. During her term as the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Jaya frequently operated out of her Kodanad tea estate. And it is Sashikala's nephew Vivek who has been left the massive bungalow in Pose Garden in Chennai. The deceased Chief Minister's iconic permanent home. 24,000 square feet in size, the property has an approximate value of 44 crore rupees.